Let's talk about our computations tab. This is where you're going to spend the majority of your time. The reason being is there's a million different ways to measure something. And the computations tab is going to allow us to be able to adjust how we're measuring it. So first let's talk about our, our power and energy. This is where we would come if we wanted to say my beam profile is equal to X amount of watts. Allows us to be able to see over here our total number, our peak, and our mins. And that's how we would correlate this beam profile to a power meter reading. Let's say that power meter reading is 5 milliwatts. If I enter in 5 milliwatts here, I'm going to change that to milliwatts. And I correlate that, I now see my total power is 5 milliwatts. But it's also going to give me, start giving me some things like energy density numbers. We're going to see a peak fluence, a minimum fluence. And we'll also, if we go back to our 2D beam display, we now start to see values that are being reported over here. Different densities because we have a lot more concentration of light there. But our next menu, this is what's most important. When you're measuring a laser, how are you measuring it? Are you measuring it with the 1 over E squared beam width measurement method? Are you using the D4 sigma method? Are you using a 90-10 knife edge measurement method? That's what beam gauge allows you to do. And through this menu, it allows us to be able to pick what is our core default measurement method. Just like if I have a ruler, and my ruler is broken up into millimeters or inches. Which do I want? I can change that here. I can change it from microns to millimeters to centimeters to mils, or I can do it in inches. I have the ability to do that. But what if I want to change how I'm computing all that information? This is where I'm going to change either from the D4 Sigma method to a knife edge method to even a percent of peak or energy. Depending upon what you want for your application, Beam Gauge has the ability to probably pick that beam with method. And this is where we set our core. Now we recommend as a default the D4 Sigma method. That's one of the ISO approved methods. It's most commonly used in, in the majority of applications when it comes to lasers. But there are some that are very specific and very unique. 90-10 knife edge, full width half max, percent of peak, percent of energy. So we have those options if you need them. But today we're going to be working with the D4 Sigma method. So that beam width method is computed and all of our spatial results that are over here in our results window, all that information that's derived using the, B, the D4 Sigma beam width method. And that tells us how many pixels, how much data are we going to include before we go outside that edge. Measuring a cotton ball. When you measure a cotton ball, do you measure every single little spurious fiber that's included or do you just measure to the average outside edge? Now if I measure it, I'm going to get one, one size. But if I give it to, one, to another person and they measure it, they might include that little spurious tangle that's sitting out on the edge. That's where the D4 Sigma method kind of sets that standard and says don't include this, but you need to include that. This is the majority of the information. That's no longer really considered the majority portion of the cotton ball. So that's what allows us to work here, is being able to change which method we want that's going to fit our application. So right now D4 Sigma is going to be our core and it's going to tell us things like our centroid, our diameter. We can turn on a lot more options. This little button right here in the corner, this is one that, that a lot of people overlook. This allows us to be able to actually pick those different levels. So if I have a percent of peak that I want to set, I can come into this menu and be able to set that there. Or if I want to be able to change my knife edge, instead of it being a 90 and 10, if I want to change it to 13 and a half, I can change it to 13 and a half. That allows me to be able to get to the 1 over E squared method. This next menu here is called optical scaling. Remember we talked a little bit ago about a lens being on our camera? And if I've got a lens, it's going to take a beam that's this big and it's going to shrink it and fit it on the camera. What's that ratio? How big is this to what's being fit on the camera? That's a ratio and that's called an optical scale. And what we're allowed to do is when we enter in here, we're going to click this little ruler button that's going to enable it. What's my scaling factor? Maybe I'm using a beam reducer and I've got a 3 to 1 ratio. I type in 3 in here and it allows it to be able to compress it down by a factor of 3. So that's what optical scaling is used for. We can go the other way. 
let's say we're looking at a really small focus spot. That small, small focus spot, I want to expand it up. Maybe I use a microscope objective on my camera. I thread it in, get everything aligned, and now I need to go the other direction, that I'm 10 times smaller on the, count, on the actual laser spot than what's getting illuminated on the camera. So I need to be able to enter that optical scaling factor so that my numbers on the screen are right and I don't have to externally calculate the correct number. Beam gauge has the ability to measure divergence. Divergence is basically how much is my light expanding over a distance. That's an angle. And so beam gauge has the ability to do it in a couple of different methods. We have what's called the focal length method. And this is the ISO approved method where you're going to position the camera's detector at the focal length of the lens. Okay. We also have the ability to do what's called a far field wide angle and a far field two point. And those are basically, you're going to take a measurement at one point and you're going to move the camera to another point and take a second measurement. And that increase or decrease is then basic trigonomic math. Was this big here? I'm that big there. I travel this far. What's that angle? So beam gauge has the ability to do either one. This next section is called our pass fail. Pass fail is if I'm setting some limits, maybe I've got a laser that's running and when it gets to be too low, I want to know it. So I can either tell it to stop processing or I can tell it to just alert me. So maybe I'm running sheet metal and I'm cutting sheet metal and any of these numbers that are on the screen, I can set a limit on. Maybe if my total power gets to be too low, I want to shut off my process so I'm not producing scrap anymore. Or if it gets to be too high, I know that I'm blowing through on my weld. Okay? So we can set a pass-fail criteria on this to either one, just give me an alert. Hey, you're getting pretty low. You may want to go stop the process and go find out what's going on. Or two, I can actually send out a TTL pulse to even trigger the laser to shut it off. Okay? Maybe you've got a very expensive piece you're working on and you're right near the end of your process and you don't want to screw it up. So what you're going to do is you could set those pass-fail limits and as soon as it gets near that limit, it would shut everything off and turn the laser off before you actually cause a problem to that piece. So beam gauge has the ability to pass-fail limits. You can set it up so I'm either, when I'm passing, I get an indicator or when I'm failing, I'm getting an indicator. And it's for any one of those numbers you can see on the screen that will be turning on. <coughs> Statistics. Beam gauge has the ability to do statistics. Any of those numbers that you see on the screen, we can run statistics on. We can do it as a short term or we can do it as a long term. So we can set up statistics, statistics to run continuously. We can set it to run off a single frame or we can set it out to run off of a number of frames. And once we get to those ends of the, of the frames, it gives us the, st the statistics, max, min, standard deviation type information. We can set up for a time if we wanted to run for a time period. Let's say we wanted to monitor a laser for 24 hours and see what happens. Is my laser power dropping over a 24 hour period? Is my beam size getting bigger over a 24 hour period? Maybe you've got an AC system that's turning on next to you and it's cooling down your laser. You can actually see that through some of the numbers. You'd want to be able to chart it. So if I want to, I can come over here and I can click on any of these numbers and I can chart them. And I can turn on my statistics. I can select all the statistics for that and I'm going to expand my window out so we can see that. So here's my min, my max, my standard deviation for just that one number. In any one of those, anything I can turn on, I can chart it, I can put it in statistics. So let's just start one right here real quick so we can see some numbers getting pulled in here. So there's some of our information on, basically we're looking at our centroid Y number and we're running statistics on it. If I want to, I can also chart it. I, by doing a right click on that number, I can select chart. It allows me to be able to put up a chart. So I can track that over a long time period or a short time period or for as long as I need to. This whole chart, you can actually export. It saves in a CSV format. You can bring it right into Excel. And that way you can chart it on your own. You can exclude information if you need to. But it's just a little save button here. I can save it as a CSV file. I can print it. I can zoom in and out on this chart. If there's some area that I really want to look at, I can zoom in on it. 
or I can float this chart. Maybe I want to move it to another monitor or I want to put it at the bottom of my screen so I can see a heartbeat monitor. And that allows me to be able to see things in real time as my centroids, maybe, maybe my laser's moving. I can monitor that drift.